Truly, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For truly our God, I said truly our God, he is worthy, he is worthy, our God is so worthy to be praised. Come on, if you know for yourself that our God is worthy, wherever you may be tonight, amen, just put your hands together, amen, and give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you know for sure that our God is worthy, amen, hallelujah. Giving thanks and praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Ricky Dixon, pastor of the Mighty Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Sun River Terrace, Illinois. And I want to welcome you all to our midweek service, and I thank God for all of uh, uh, our Mount Calvary members, as well as any visitors and friends that are out there watching us live over YouTube and or Facebook or listening in on our conference call number. I give God the glory for every one of you, and I thank and praise God for gracing us and allowing all of us to uh, just be right back to uh, hear from the Lord one more time. Uh, a couple of quick things uh, before we get started, amen. I want to thank God again for all of you for your faithfulness and your consistency in dialing in every evening at the 6 o'clock hour to attend our daily prayer calls. And I thank God for how God is moving, amen, and answering prayers and working miracles and healings and opening doors. God is good. And I also want to thank God for all of you who are fasting with me uh, during this month of October, amen. I thank you for believing the word of God along with me, that some things only come by fasting and prayer. Amen. And uh, I'm going to do just deviate just a bit and ask everyone that's on the conference call line, please mute your phones right now, because I'm hearing a lot of feedback. Amen. And that means if I'm hearing it, others are hearing it as well. So please hit the mute button on your smartphone or star six on your keypad. Amen. Because there's a terrible amount of uh, noise right now and we cannot hear. Amen. So please help me out with that if you don't mind. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Last but not least, also I want to thank God for all of you. Amen. Who are also continuing on the word fast with me. Amen. We started that uh, about a year or so ago. And many of you like me have said that uh, you are not anywhere where you need to be. Uh, you continue to meet the Lord to uh, watch over your words. And uh, you don't want to speak words of negativity or sarcasm or complaint. Uh, you don't want to be judgmental. You want to speak... You, you want to have, let me say it this way, uh, of the, the, the language of the kingdom of God, and that that's what you desire like I desire, and it's what God wants us to have. We've got to ask the Lord to bridle our tongue and work a work within us, and we're doing that through the book that we study together and through the 40-day word fast. So God bless you all for continuing down that path with me as well. Last but not least, before we go into the word of God, I again want to thank God for uh, Mount Calvary's uh, Deacon Jamie Shell. Uh, who is here with us, amen, in the sound room here, uh, part of our media ministry, and he's making all of this happen uh, from a visual as well as an audio perspective. So I thank God for him uh, and how God has graced him and gifted him with many, many, many talents, amen, that he uses to help Mount Calvary do what we do during this time of uh, separation and uh, during the pandemic. But I thank God that he has allowed us to stay connected, even though we can't be in this beautiful sanctuary together, Amen. God has still allowed us uh, ways to be connected, and I, I give him all the glory and the honor and the praise for that. Amen. So as we get ready to go forward again, let me just reground us really quick and remind everyone that for the last few weeks we've been uh, uh, continuing to plow through our Overcomer topic and teaching series. Amen. And we've been talking the last several weeks, we've been uh, bundling together several powerful and impactful statements uh, that were made throughout the movie. Amen. And uh, we've been focusing, my brothers and sisters, for the last several weeks on the topic of identity. Amen. And as we all know, as a reminder, that word identity, it means to associate with or have strong linkages with someone or something. And I think we all agree that as uh, 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 children of the Most High God, amen, and as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to have linkage, amen, to the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen. And uh, if you were with us last week, um, I gave you some homework, amen. Uh, just as Principal uh, uh, Brooks in the movie gave Hannah some homework, and she told Hannah, just like I told all of you last week, open your Bibles uh, and look at the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2, and write down everything that the Word of God says 
uh, who you are. Amen. So I hope you had some uh, time uh, uh, this past week to uh, start your homework. Amen. And write down some of the things that God says we are in his word. Amen. So um, that's where I want to go tonight. Ephesians chapter number one. Amen. And uh, as you open your Bibles and turn there with me, uh, let me just give you a, a, a bit of brief context into uh, this book of Ephesians, if you don't mind. Um, help me, Holy Ghost. This book of Ephesians is a, uh, it's a, it's a letter, my brothers and sisters. It's a letter that the Apostle Paul penned to the church at Ephesus. Amen. Now, this particular letter, Deacon Shell and Church Family, is a little different than any of the other letters that Paul uh, uh, wrote to churches that he founded on his first or second missionary journey. Amen. Uh, this letter uh, that Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus does not uh, uh, address, amen, a, uh, a, a, a problem within the church or a, a, a one particular aspect of, of what's going on in the church, but rather the, the, uh, uh, the, this letter to the uh, uh, church at Ephesus uh, is centered around talking about uh, and trying to reach those that were once Gentiles and had been converted into Christianity. Amen. So the letter centers around encouraging those uh, uh, Gentile converts uh, who are early in their walk and in their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So it differs just a bit from any of the other letters that the Apostle Paul penned to other churches uh, that he wrote uh, to. Now, Let's look at chapter 1 in this book of Ephesians, amen, so that we can find out what the Bible says about who we are. And it all maps back to, my brothers and sisters, again, our topic of identity as overcomers, amen. So Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1, I'm going to read tonight Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, amen. And again, this, this book of... Uh, Philippians, uh, or Ephesians, I'm sorry, it, 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 it talks about unity in the body of Christ, oneness in the body of Christ, and it talks about how to encourage those young Christian converts. And here's how Paul does it. In verse number one, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amen. That third verse is where I really want to start honing in on. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have done what, church? That word says he has blessed us. That's where I want us to hone in on tonight. The first thing, my brothers and sisters, in this first chapter of the book of Ephesians, that it tells us that we are is this. It tells us that we are blessed. Amen, somebody. Now, let me say this, and let me frame this word blessing up, because a lot of times it, get, it, it, it gets... Uh, I'm going to say it gets misconstrued, it gets misused, and it, it gets placed on uh, things that it has no business being placed on. Amen. So let's, let's do a deep dive on this word, bless. Amen. The Bible says, according in, in the third uh, verse of Ephesians chapter 1, it says, we are blessed. Amen. And church, please know this, as I start out talking about uh, 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 that word, bless, please know this, God's Blessings, church. They are not on pause. Neither are, are they on a uh, help me, help me, on a hiatus. Even though we are in the midst of a global pandemic, Amen. God's blessings, church. They are not on pause. They are not on hiatus, Amen. During this pandemic, because the reality is this: our God is still in the blessing business, Amen. Somebody, I said, our God. I can prove it to you. That he's still in the blessing business. Here's how I can prove it to you. The very fact that you're listening to me right now, or the very fact that you're watching me live right now, proves, amen, without a shadow of a doubt, that our God is still in the blessing business. He blessed us, amen, to, to, to see a day that had never been uh, seen before the foundation of the world. He kept us all day long 
tongue, which is a blessing, amen. Gave us our right mind, which is a blessing, amen. Allowed us to be able to use our cell phones, amen, or, 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 or to uh, tune in live over YouTube and or Facebook. Paid that electric bill, amen. Paid that cell phone bill. It's a blessing, amen. God is still, church, in the blessing business. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, God is still blessing. Amen. I wish I had a church right now because I believe some of Mount Calvary would holler back at me and say amen. Our God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Not only is he still in the blessing business, but let me just add a little something, something on there. He's still in the healing business. I wish I had some help. Amen. I, I, I can tell you for a fact he's still in the healing business because he healed me. Amen. He raised me up. God is still, even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still in the healing business. Amen. And not only is he still in the blessing business and the healing business, God is still in the making a way business. Amen. And I wish I had somebody out there that can testify. Amen. It didn't look good. I didn't know how it was going to happen. Amen. Oh, but God made a way. Amen. Uh, he will make a way. He is still in the way making business. And our God is still, he's still in the, in, in the miracle making business too, amen. Because the God we serve, he is a miracle worker. Amen, somebody. Amen, amen. So even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, even though uh, uh, positivity and infection rates are going up, hospitalizations are going up, even though Governor Pritzker is talking about shutting down for a couple of weeks certain aspects of the industry, amen, in certain counties, amen. In spite of all of that, our God, church, is still in the blessing business. Don't ever lose sight of that. Amen. Don't ever get so down and discouraged. Amen. Uh, and, and, and don't be uh, 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 tuning in so much and, and letting the news that you see get on the inside of you where you start to doubt God. Amen. That God is not still in the blessing business. Amen. Because God has got a way of taking care of his own no matter what's going on in society, no matter what's going on with the economy, no matter what's going on on your job or any, anywhere else. Our God is still in the blessing business. Even though they can't pass a stimulus plan in D.C., amen, God is not dependent on them, amen, because, amen, the cattle help me, Holy Ghost, on a thousand hills is all his, amen. All power is in his hand. Matter of fact, I got some scriptures to back it all up. Isaiah 9 and 6, it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, amen. Our God, amen, he is able in every situation, and he is still in the blessing business. So don't let what's happening on the outside get on the inside of you and make you stop, start to doubt our God, amen. Don't doubt him, amen. Believe what he said, amen, and believe what he's already done, amen, and rest in it, amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Now listen, verse 3 in Ephesians chapter 1 says, we are blessed. Amen. I want you to know that, church. I, I want you to write that down. Amen. Part of your homework. I'm a good teacher. Even if you don't have the right answer written down, I'm going to give you a, a, a extra credit. I'm going to help you pass this test. Amen. Write it down. The Bible says, I am blessed. My situation don't decide whether I'm blessed. The enemy doesn't decide whether I'm blessed. Amen. My family doesn't. My haters don't. Amen. The Bible, the word of God says, I am blessed. And get that into your spirit, my brothers and sisters. In spite of everything going on, in spite of what's happening right now, we are blessed. Amen, somebody. Now let me go a little deeper in that word blessed. The Bible says, we are blessed. Now, Church, when we talk about that word bless, amen, uh, we are not talking about the stuff that you hear from church folk when you ask them that churchy question, amen, how you doing, and they respond with that old cliche, uh, oh, I'm blessed, and I'm highly favored. Amen. Y'all know, we know the rhetoric. We know, we, we know how to provide those churchy, uh, 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 you know, cliche-ish answers. Amen. But, but, but a lot of times that's thrown out there. Amen. And that's not really the case. Amen. See, see it's cliche -ish and it sounds good on the surface. Amen. But the, 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 the question on the table is, what does the word blessed really mean? I'm so glad y'all asked. Now, 
When I say, uh, uh, and I told you some of this before, my camera, but when I say the word blessed, I'm not referring nor talking about how much money you may have in the bank. I'm not talking about the house you may live in or the community that you live in. I'm not talking about how many cars you may have in your driveway. I'm not talking about any CDs, retirement plans, 401ks, annuities. I'm not talking about none of that. Amen. All of that, church, is well and good. But Deacon Shell, all of that is not being blessed. Amen. Amen. Listen, all of those things are symptoms or byproducts of being blessed, if you will. Amen. Because, listen, the root cause of you being, really being blessed, amen, and the truth of the matter is simply this. The reason why you are blessed, amen, is because God has graced you. And I'm going to show it to you in the word, amen. But, but not only has he graced you, but one thing about it, amen, you can be, amen, oh, help me, help me, help me. You can be in the middle of a pandemic, amen, and still be blessed and highly favored. Amen. Listen, uh, uh, I ain't talking about all that, 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 that cliche, cliche stuff, amen. Listen, you can be, I hate to use this term, but then I'm going to use it just to get my point across. You can be broke, busted, and disgusted, amen, and still be blessed and highly favored. Y'all know I don't like that term, broke, amen, because the reality is this is a child of God, amen. You're not broke. What we got to do is say we in between blessings. So let me frame it and say it this way, now that I got my point across, amen. You can be in between blessings, amen, and still be blessed and highly favored. Have I got a witness? Amen. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, you can be, uh, help me, Holy Ghost, you can be homeless, you can be carless, you can be jobless, amen. You can be friendless, amen, but still be blessed because when you are a child of God, amen, you are never helpless nor hopeless, nor are you friendless because as the songwriter, you said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. This is what we do every night at 6 o'clock, to carry everything to God in prayer. We're not friendless as a as the body of Christ and as a child of God. We're not helpless, amen, and we are not hopeless, amen, somebody, amen. Listen, because the reality is this, it ain't about cars, it ain't about money, it ain't about houses, it ain't about material possessions, amen, it ain't about the clothes you wear or, or the purse you carry or how often you can get your hair done, it can be fried, dyed, and laid to the side, it does not matter. The Bible says this, for a man's life, help me, Holy Ghost, does not consist in the abundance of things that he and or she possesses. Amen. A man's life, amen, consists of whether or not he and or she has accepted Jesus into their heart. Amen. That's how you know you're living, when you've accepted Jesus in your heart. That's how you know you're, you're big shot calling and high balling and all that good stuff. Amen. When you accept Jesus into your life. Amen. That's how you know you're blessed and highly favored. When God is at the center of your life. Amen. It's not about, my brothers and sisters, the material things. Because all of those things are going to burn. And only what you do for Christ will last. Amen, amen, amen. Again, I tell you, church, it's not about money. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. You can have money, but just because you got money doesn't mean you can use that money to buy you everything that you need. You can have money to buy you a house, but it won't buy you a home. I told you this, church. You can have money to buy you medicine, but it can't buy you healing. You can have money to buy you a man or a woman, but it will not buy you a husband or a wife. Amen, somebody. You've got to understand that money is the least of all things, and it is the root of all evil. So just because you got two nickels to rub together, you can't get up on your high horse and think that you are blessed, amen, because that is a symptom or a byproduct of being blessed. Amen, somebody. Let me go a little deeper. Amen. Being blessed is not about having things. Amen, somebody. Being blessed, here's what it is. It's the, help me, Holy Ghost, it is the invisible assurance of the favor of God Resting on your life. That's what being blessed is. Amen. It is the invisible assurance of the favor of God resting on your life. That's when you know you're blessed. Amen. So in other words, listen to this. 
when you're blessed, you can say with full assurance, amen. I've been through hell and high water a time or two before, but I am still blessed. Amen. When you're blessed, amen, you can say, I had to deal with some sickness before, but God brought me out. God raised me up, and I am still blessed. Amen. When you're blessed, you can say without a shadow of a doubt, I've been down a time or two before, but God lifted me. He restored me. He raised me. Amen. And he set me back down in heavenly places with him. That's how you know you are blessed. And listen, let me tell you something else about being blessed. This is what Paul told the church in Ephesus. In verse 3, he said, you are blessed. But let me tell you something else, church, about being blessed. Amen. Your blessing and my blessing is not dependent upon, amen, who likes you, amen, and how people feel about you. Oh, I thank God for that assurance, amen. We being blessed, us being blessed, amen. I don't say it that way. It ain't grammatically correct, but it'll fit for tonight, amen. Us being blessed is not dependent upon who like us or who agree with us. Amen. Who support us or not. Amen. And it don't matter how people feel about us. Amen. Because the reality is this. When God, help me, Holy Ghost, when the Lord gets ready to bless us, amen, he'll make even our enemies bless us. And they'll say, I don't know stuff like, I don't know why I'm going to do this. I don't know why I'm doing this. Amen. But when God gets ready to bless you, amen, he'll even make your enemies bless you. Have I got a witness? He'll make somebody, amen, who hates you, bless you and sow seed into your life. Amen. Oh, yes, God can and he will. Amen. And listen, when our God gets ready to open up a door, amen, he'll make your enemies bless you. And again, they won't even know why they are moving in that way and why they are doing what they are doing. It's because God is behind the scenes blessing his children. Amen, somebody. And listen, another thing about being blessed, when it is your season to be blessed, can't nobody block it, can't nobody delay it, can't nobody deny it, amen, somebody, haters can hate all they want, they can't stop it, amen, because the reality is this, what God has for you, it is for you, amen, somebody, what God has for me, it is for me, can't nobody stop it, they can't block it. They can't delay it. They cannot deny it. When God is getting ready to open the windows of heaven and the portals of glory and pour us out a blessing, when God is getting ready to move on our lives, when God is getting ready to answer prayers, when God is getting ready to work miracles in our lives, can't nobody stop it. And they can't block it. They cannot delay it. And they cannot deny it. Because what God has for us, church, is overcomers. It is for us. An amen goes right there. Hallelujah. An amen goes right there. Now listen. Here's the truth of it all. What is being blessed is the invisible uh, assurance of, of, of the manifestation of the favor of God being on your life. But here's the reality of everything. The truth is this. Blessings, church, they are not tied into what you have, but they are tied into who you have. Amen. I'm going to say that one again. Blessings are not tied into what you have, just like I told you a few minutes ago, but rather they are tied into who you have. See, the truth is this. Blessings are not tied into what we possess, but they are tied into what God promised. Amen. And I wonder if I have any Bible readers out there tonight, amen, that can testify, amen, to the very fact, amen, that's recorded in 2 Corinthians, amen, that all the promises of God in him are yea and amen. He said his word won't return unto him void over in the book of Isaiah, but it will accomplish, amen, that in which he sent it out to. If God has made us a promise, it will come to pass. As a matter of fact, you can't even die before that promise comes to pass. Amen. Oh, if I had time, I'd take you back over to the book of 1 Kings. Amen. And tell you the story about Elisha. Amen. Y'all know. Amen. Maybe one time I'll plant that seed again. Amen. But even when God is getting ready to uh, fulfill the promises that he's made in our lives, we can't even die 
before that promise comes to pass. Because if we did, that would mean God is a liar. And the word of God says he's not a man that he must lie. Neither is he the son of man that he must repent. If God said I'm going to bless you, you better get ready. If God said I'm going to heal you, you better get ready for your healing. If God said I'm going to provide for you, you better get ready for provision to be made for you. Amen. And that's why we ought to worship him. That's why we ought to praise him. Because God's word is out. And it will not return unto him void. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now, it goes on to say this. It goes on to say this. In that third verse, it's right here. It says, not only are we blessed, but Deacon Shell, when you read some more, it says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. That's what it says in that third verse in Ephesians uh, uh, chapter 1, verse number 3. It says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Amen. So in other words, God is saying this, believer. God is saying this, overcomer. God is saying Every spiritual blessing in this book belongs to you and I as believers, as overcomers, and as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spiritual blessing in this book, verse 3 is telling us, it belongs to us. Amen. And they belong to us, but the reality is this, church. Every promise in this book, every spiritual blessing is a conditional spiritual blessing. Amen, somebody. In other words, you've got to be obedient to receive them. And not obedient to this person or to that person, but obedient to God. Amen, somebody. Look, they belong to us, but they are conditional blessings. Got some scripture to back it up, Pastor Dixon? Y'all know I do. Psalm 84 and 11, amen. The Bible says there's no good thing Will I withhold from you if you just, here's the condition, if you just walk uprightly. Amen. That's a blessing. That's a promise. Amen. No good thing, Psalm 84 and 11. Will I withhold from you if you just walk uprightly. Amen. That's a promise from God. Can I go a little deeper? You got some more scripture, Pastor? This is y'all know I do. I want everyone to see this one. Amen. Turn with me in your Bible. You were in Ephesians in the New Testament. But turn with me real quick over to Deuteronomy, chapter number 28. Yeah, we hear this a lot, but I want you to see this in, 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 in the fullness of the scripture. Deuteronomy, amen. Deuteronomy, chapter number 28. Once you got it, say, I got it. And I'm going to start at verse number 1. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse number 1. Talking about the conditional blessings. Listen to this now. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And I'm going to read down, uh, help me Holy Ghost, to verse 14, and then we're going to try to get out of here. But listen to this. And it shall come to pass. Here's the condition. Amen. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. This is what Moses is telling the nation of Israel. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. I am not making this up. Not only was this good, Deacon Shell, not only was this good to the Israelites, amen, uh, but it's good to the Christians today. Amen. This is what the Bible says. Amen. It shall come to pass. Amen. That, that if, 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 that's that word, if, it all depends on us. But if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which Moses said, I command you this day, Israel, that the Lord thy God, here's what he will do. If you do your part, he'll do his part. He will set you on high above all nations of the earth. Hallelujah. That's shouting stuff, y'all. And look, it gets, here's another word. It ain't grammatically correct, but it fit. It get good and good starting in verse 2. Verse 2 says, and all these, there's that word, blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. That's what I want, Deacon Shell. That's what I want, church. I want some overtaking blessings. Amen. I want my blessings to be so much and in so much abundance and it's so frequently and I want them to overtake me. Amen. I want to be subdued. I want to be submerged. Amen. I want my blessings to overtake me. I wish somebody felt that way about it as well. Amen. 
The Bible says, amen, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. Here's that word again. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you obey, God said, I'll bless you. I'll have all these blessings come on you and overtake you. And then he gets even more in detail in verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. In other words, God is saying, everything that pertaineth unto you, if you do your part, not only will I bless you, but I bless your seed. I bless your children. I bless your children's children. Pastor Dixon, I bless your church. Amen. I bless your street. I bless your community. I bless your job. Amen. I bless everything that's tied and pertaining to you. And see, that's why we got to pray one for another. Amen. Because, amen, my, uh, 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 you praying for me and me praying for you, amen, to be steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the works of the Lord, it has spiritual implications on God doing what he said he would do. Amen. Pray that I be steadfast. Pray that I would hearken diligently unto the Lord thy God. And if you pray and if I do my part, you can be blessed because I'm doing my part, just like I can be blessed because you are doing your part. I keep telling you, church, we are in this thing together. I need you, and you need me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No man and no woman is an island all by themselves. We are in this thing, church, together. And it's solidified right here in that verse. Amen. God says, starting in verse 4, I'll bless everything that's tied to you. Amen. Then he says in verse 6, Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine, here we go, thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. I don't know who your enemies are. I don't know what your enemies are. But this verse right here talks about the children of God. If we hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God, it talks about us having invincibility. Amen. It talks about it. I'm going to read it again. It says it right here. Amen. It says it right here in God's word. It says, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee. I don't care what the enemy is. I don't care who the enemy is. It can be sickness. It can be anything. Amen. It can be depression. Amen. It can be a broken heart. It does not matter. It can be bereavement. Whatever it is. Amen. The Lord shall command. Amen. Uh, that shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. In other words, God says, I'm going to let you see victory in your life. I'm going to let you see your enemies be smitten. Amen. I'm not going to do it in the corner. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to allow you to stay here long enough to be able to see it and to give me the glory for it. Hallelujah. Let me go a little deeper. Amen. Listen. Then he goes on to say, amen. He will cause my enemies that rise up against me to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against me one way, and God says, I'll make them flee before you seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command thy the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thy settest, there we go, thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I'm going to read this, and then I may come back to it and, and do a deeper dive next week because I, I don't want to rush you. So let me just plant this seed into your hearing. Verse 9, the Lord shall establish thee an holy people unto himself. As he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk, church, in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear, be the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou, amen, shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Verse 14. 
and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Amen. This church is the biblical definition, one of many biblical definitions of what it really means to be blessed. Amen. I hope that you're, you, you, you're not too fond of the, of, of the prettiness of your Bible, that you don't want to write it in and mark it up and highlight this stuff. But I really admonish and encourage everyone listening to me and watching me, highlight this. Highlight Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 through 14 in your Bible, to go back to it, because these are promises that God says, I want to give to you if you, church, will do your part. I want to bless you. I want to open doors for you. I want to bless your seed and your basket and your store. I want you to see your enemies fall, amen, because of what I do to them, amen. But God says it's all dependent on you. If you do your part, if I do my part, God says I promise you I will do my part. This is what it means to be blessed. This is what it means to have the favor of God on you. It comes when you're blessed and when you have the favor of God on your church, it comes with spiritual evidence. Amen. A lot of people talk about being blessed. A lot of people want to want to fake the funk and talk this thing, but they have no evidence, no spiritual evidence. The Bible is clear that if we do our part, there will be spiritual evidence that shows that we are blessed. Amen. Then that way, can't nobody refute that it was nobody but Jesus. And let me say this, and I'm going to close, because we're going to come back to this next week to do it justice. Amen. When God, church, blesses you, humble yourself even the more. Don't get the big head and think that you deserve it. Even if you do keep the commandments. Amen. I'm going to give you some more scripture to back this up. That's our reasonable service. Amen. That's our reasonable service. We don't deserve the things that God does for us, but when he blesses us according to his word, humble yourself. Say to God, be the glory for all the things that he has done. Don't you puff, don't, don't push out and puff out your chest and lift up your head and, and think that it's all about you. Don't swell up, amen. Humble yourself and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Give God all the glory. And the more glory you give to him, the more he will shower blessings on you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And the word of God says this, and I will exalt you in due time. This is what it means to be blessed. Let me close it this way. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3 says that God says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. I'm going to come back here next week, and we're going to do a deeper dive on the spiritual blessings so that we can really understand what God has promised us. Amen. And then we're going to keep on going, but we don't want to skirt over it because God's people, during such tragic and crucial and critical times that we are forced to live in and navigate in today, we need to know that in spite of what's happening around us, in spite of what's happening on the news, in spite of lockdowns and sheltering in place and uh, uh, not sure when the vaccine will come and how, how much longer we'll have to be confined, we still need to know that we are blessed. Amen. And I promise you, church, if you're watching me, if you're listening to me, we are blessed among men. Amen. So to God be the glory for all the things that he has done and how he has spoken to our hearts on tonight. Amen. And there may be somebody listening live or watching this telecast, amen, or this screen, and uh, you have never confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you are sitting in that seat tonight, or if you know you are saved and your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you want to join up with this body of baptized believers, either way, I want you to dial the church at 815-937-4300 and leave your name and your number, amen, on the church voicemail, and I will personally pick up your message call you back, pray with you, walk you through the plan of salvation, and accept you, amen, uh, on your Christian experience or as a candidate for baptism into the body of Christ and into the family of God. And we will welcome you here at Mount Calvary. If this is where you want to call home or if you want to go somewhere else, I will facilitate that in working with that pastor of that church 
to let them know, amen, to expect you to be a part of the family of God there, amen. God is awesome, church, and even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still saving. God is still writing somebody's name in the Lamb's Book of Life because the Bible says this. This is another blessing we're going to look at. He is still married to the backslider, amen, and I thank God for that, amen. So God bless you and may God keep you. Amen. And again, if you want to be saved or if you want to join up with this body of baptized believers here at Mount Calvary, call us at 815-937-4300. Amen. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And I thank God for all of you. Uh, two quick announcements and then we're getting, actually three, and then we're getting out of here. The first is this. Don't forget tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we will not be on our prayer conference call number, but we will be on the Kent Key Baptist District Association's uh, uh, prayer call number. Amen. That information is out on our church Facebook page. You can dial in and just listen uh, through the audio, or if you want to dial in and join through the Zoom link, that is out there. And talking about the Zoom link, let me say this. Uh, I want us to have a church check-in meeting on Sunday of this week after our prayer time. Amen. Starting at 6.30, I want us, and I'll put all this information on our church Facebook page. I need your help to spread the word. I want to do it over Zoom. And if you're unable to do it over Zoom, uh, then uh, you can also dial in with the number that's associated with the Zoom account. So we'll put that out on the church Facebook page to help me spread the word. I want to do a church check-in, amen, on this Sunday, immediately after, amen, our uh, prayer uh, time. So we'll start that at about 6.30, 6.35 on Sunday. More information to come, but it will be on our church Facebook page. And last but not least, something else that I will put on our church Facebook page is this. Um, I got a letter in the mail today uh, that the Kentucky uh, 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 police uh, force, they are looking for applicants, amen. They are looking for individuals that are opening up a uh, applicant pool right now, so there's specific instructions that they want those who are uh, uh, looking to apply for the Kentucky police force to go through. There's a timeline and a process. I will post all of that sometime tonight when I get back home on the church Facebook page. So if you are interested and in need of a job and you want to join uh, and meet the qualifications of Kent Key uh, Police Department, please do so or spread the word for someone else. But that information will be out on the church Facebook page as well. Amen. I hope and pray that you have been blessed and encouraged tonight. And know this, church. Amen. We are overcomers. Yes. Amen. And part of our identity is what Paul told the church at Ephesus in verse number three. We are blessed. Amen. Don't forget it. As you go to sleep tonight, keep saying it, speak over yourself and encourage yourself and say, I am blessed. Amen. And all the blessed people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Now for the benediction, those that can raise your right hand with me and repeat after me. I cannot live in sin and feel my Savior's love. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Good night, family. God bless you. I love you all with the love of Jesus. God bless you all. And even to our visitors, love you all with the love of Jesus. Have a great evening.